I learned about it through popular media like most people do and a lot of the things that we know from the popular media is really poorly researched. The productization of what's happening now, it's amazing what companies are coming up with and how much more reliability there are in the dosing. If you go to a high school party nowadays, there's always going to be marijuana there. The earlier you use, the bigger the effect on the development of your brain. There's no politician in the world who can tell me that we're not creating medicine. I've been a medical marijuana user for about 18 months now. Without the cannabis, I don't know what I would do. The research is inadequate. It's been blocked. Our government, in their good intentions, have unfortunately gotten in the way of good science. I think that it's, it's fairly certain that there will be a nationwide decriminalization in the next decade or two. If you would have asked me this three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, that we would be doing this, there's no way. THC is tetrahydrocannabinol. This is the form of the cannabinoid in the plant that is active in our brain. It is psychotropic, it's what causes intoxication. The other main cannabinoid is CBD or cannabidiol, and this is not particularly active in the brain and is active in the rest of the body, and it looks like this is really the medicinal compound in cannabis. Our building is a 44,000 square foot facility, roughly an acre footprint, which we're cultivating 27, 28,000 square feet. The way our cultivation works is um, all of our rooms are staggered, so we're pretty much harvesting, trimming, curing, drying, packaging every single day. We have 12 flower rooms that are in production all the time. Most rooms have about five to 600 plants that produce about 100 pounds per room. I pledge to my campaign for the presidency to end the war. We can win. New Mexico actually had the earliest known indoor grow operation in the 1920s. It was 1926. The plant derived overland primarily from Central America here in the western United States most important dispersal pathways into the United States was the Rio Grande Valley and the lowlands of southern Arizona into California as well. New Mexico had one of the earliest laws against cannabis here in Bernalillo County, I think it was 1915. Pancho Villa, he's prominent in the literature, in the cannabis histories. People associated it with him. His fighters and the people he was opposed to had the song about marijuana. The song was La Cucaracha. That was the opening of the documentary New Marijuana. I have filmmaker Chris Schuler with us to talk about what he learned while making the film. Chris, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So many interesting things here, just a little bit of time. But let me ask you this. It seemed to me when I watched this the other night, there is just a Wild West wide open feeling going on here, and we really don't know a lot of answers on marijuana. We're one of the still reasons, getting there. One of the reasons we did the show, yeah. I, it, it is, as we started studying it, first of all, kids said, I'm the access, everybody's using it now, blah, 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 blah. Right. But when we see the differences it has undergone in the last two decades, right. the, the THC levels skyrocketing in the last decade, we see the forms changing. Right. We see the research now starting to happen. Yeah. So there's some interesting things going on that may be really, really beneficial. Right. But then we also see some things that are happening with teenage brains that the research is just coming out on that says this is a bad thing for mm -hmm. kids to be using before their prefrontal cortex is developed. Right. And then you get the money. Uh -huh. And because of the money, Everybody, and the legalization that's starting now is only happening because of the money. I mean, Colorado last year sold a billion, one sure. billion with a B dollars worth. Yep. The state made $200 million. Well, 
Everybody's looking at it now. So it is the Wild West. You right. describe it well. It's right. the Wild West, and we got to be cognizant of it. Are we in a situation where the money is so good, folks are tending to look the other way on potential issues here? Let's talk about kids specifically. Uh, is, is, there, is there enough attention being paid to it because the money has just been I, so I think what's blinding. happening, I, I, I don't want to think that. Sure. I hope that's not the case. Sure. I think what's happening, though, is parents don't know what's going on exactly. Gotcha. And they're going, that's why we interviewed, uh, well, you'll see, you'll see him coming up in the show. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about, you know, okay, when we were parents, you know, it was not a big deal. They smoked pot, okay, big deal. Um, now if kids smoke, it is a big deal right. because the, the levels have changed. Right. So I think that the, the money has made it and the legalization has made it appear less risky and yet it is right. more risky for teenagers than uh, it ever has been before. Interesting. At the same time, we have some new studies out there that teenage use of marijuana is dropping a bit here in the United States. What do you attribute that to? I, you know, I, and I, I, I looked this up just for you. Okay. Um, it, it has dropped since 79, when it was at as high as like 50% of 12th graders had used marijuana in, right. the, in 79. Right. Then it dropped way down by 91, it was 22%. Right. Now it's actually back up to 35%. So, so yes, it's gone down overall, but okay. it is starting back up, and I think it's due to all the, the thoughts on legalization. Right. Um, the thing that scares me is, um, in terms of perceived risk, mm -hmm. it is just as high, just as low perceived risk by teenagers now as it was back in 79. Hmm. They think it's not risky at all. Interesting. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. In your research, what do you, what do you think is coming up in the future on this idea of research and what, how it affects kids? Are we really going to be able to get somewhere on this issue? When I, I ask that because <clears> kids <throat> are kids. Well, you know I think, what I mean? Peer pressure, no, the whole no, thing. And the, the, and, research, you know. the research is clear yeah. in terms of brain development in kids. Yeah. That's clear. Okay. If you're smoking pot, the more you're smoking, it's going to affect your memory, it's going to affect your concentration. If you're doing it a whole heck of a lot, right. the more you use it, the further down your grades go. Been proven. Yeah. It's absolutely firm. Yeah. Regarding all the medical stuff, I am really glad it's being legalized because that medical stuff could be a godsend. Sure. You've seen it with the seizures, sure. with the glaucoma, with the cancer right. stuff, all those things. Right. So I'm really excited about about the possibility of more research being done in those areas. Right. One of the things in the doc that I really appreciated is this idea of impairment. That we really don't have our arms around the idea of what makes one impaired behind the wheel with marijuana. Where are we on that? Right? Well, we're, we're right in a difficult spot. And yeah. as you'll see later in the documentary, they're trying to figure out how to deduce if it is impairing. Right. I mean, it's not like a breathalyzer test. You can't take that. So uh, law enforcement personnel are now being trained in Colorado. They're going to have to be trained here yeah. and all over the country yeah. because it's a different kettle of fish. It's, it's not the same kind of impairment as alcohol. It's not a physical impairment, it's a mental impairment. Right. As a result, things slow down. Is it impairing? Absolutely. Do mm -hmm. you want to risk driving while you've smoked? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, but how to determine how much that is, That's right. really difficult. Chris, thanks for coming in. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Now, let's go back to that film and pick up a different perspective on how marijuana is being used by people suffering from chronic pain and other illnesses.